In this video, I'm going to show you how to create this really awesome mirror effect inside of Adobe Premiere Pro. It's really quick, really simple, and a really fun effect to do. So let's get into it. Now, before we get into Adobe Premiere Pro, we first just need to get the right footage in order to do the effect. So you just want to go ahead, find the location. This could be a bathroom mirror, a kitchen mirror. Just put your camera onto a tripod, frame it just behind the person in the mirror. So you've got a really cool over the shoulder shot. And then you just want to go ahead and complete the action for the first person. Now go ahead and complete the action for the second person. And you've now got all of the footage that you need to do this effect. But you first just want to make sure that you weren't overlapping the mirror. If you do, then you're going to have to rotoscope this out. And this means you've either got to mask it or we've got to put it into Adobe After Effects to roto the effect, which is just a little bit time consuming. So it's quick and simple to just do this in Premiere. And the best way to do this is just to avoid crossing the mirror too much. So with that said and done, let's get this footage into Adobe Premiere Pro and I'll show you how to do this effect. So this is the first action. So this is me at the tap. And this is just me reacting to what I'm seeing in the mirror. And then shot number two is going to be this really goofy version of the same mirror shot. So we're just going to stack these on top of each other like this. And all we really need to do is just cut out this reflection here. So we'll put this reflection, the one that we want to replace the original reflection with on the top layer. Then we'll go to opacity, select the free draw bezier tool, and we'll just draw a mask around the frame like this. Then we're just going to soften this up with the mask feather just to make sure that you can't see that hard edge of the mask. And when we play this back, you'll notice the effect is actually already doing what it needs to do. Now, as you can see, there is a slight problem with my effect here as I go further in. I was using a bathroom with a window that you can't shut. So loads of daylight is streaming through this window here just behind the mirror. So as you can see, the light obviously changed outside a little bit. And now we've got this rectangle just floating above the video. So this is why you should always try your very best to film in an environment where you've got the most amount of control over the lighting. However, this is a relatively easy fix for me to do. I can just go into this layer, go into that mask. And rather than stopping the mask down here, I'm just going to follow the curvature of this mirror here. There you go. That should do the trick now. And now if we take that back in time a little bit and we go to that same point in time where it increased in brightness, you can see it's not as much of a problem as it was. Now this does look great, but the only problem is we've kind of become used to seeing visual effects done with static shots. It kind of is a giveaway. So rather than using a static shot, we're just going to group both of these together. So we'll select both of those. We're going to right click and we're going to select a nest. So we're just grouping them into one video. Now we're just going to go to the beginning. We'll increase the scale to 105. So we've got a little bit of wiggle room to play with. And now we'll just go to position. We'll move five or six keyframes over and we'll just move the position a little bit. Then we'll go maybe 10 frames to the right and we'll move it up and across. Then we'll go another maybe five or six keyframes over and just keep repeating this process to create a little bit of basic handheld movement. Now, as you can see, that's a little bit too much movement there. It doesn't look natural. And that's because the gap between the keyframes is too short. So I'm just going to increase the gap between those keyframes like this. You can see that looks a little bit better, but when it hits a specific keyframe, it just bounces. It's like one of those DVD icons. It hits the corner of the screen and just bounces off. So to get rid of that, we just want to highlight all of the keyframes right click on one of them, select temporal interpolation and select ease in. This is going to ease those keyframes. So rather than bouncing off the keyframe, it's going to slowly go into it and then come out of it. It should look a lot more natural, but that is the effect pretty much now complete. So all we did to do this effect was just got two locked off shots, masked one over another one, and then just added a little bit of handheld camera movement to really sell the effect but it really is a quick and simple effect to do. And you can get really creative if you use dramatic lighting with this as well. So thank you ever so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate your support and hopefully I will see you on the next video. See you there.